All right, so I suppose the first thing is to say uh, the um, this Zoom is what we're going to use on Thursdays at 6 p.m. And we're going to have effectively a tutorial. Uh, I would anticipate it'll be about an hour, hour and a half maximum each week on a Thursday. And we'll go through a bit of an overview of that, that week and look at the tutorial questions and, and just work through the, the issues that are relevant to that week and, and hopefully interact as much as we can about what, what that week holds for you. Um, we're not going to use the Collaborate on the course website, but as you'll see, each week what I'll do, and you'll see here, hopefully you can all see the, the page here in front that I'm scrolling on. Yeah. Yeah. You'll see that, that this morning I've changed this front page. Um, this, some of this text was here last week. But uh, you'll see in this first part, we're really just setting the framework to take us forwards. Um, by that I mean we're looking at some of the skills that you'll need in terms of understanding how to find specific legislation and how to um, find the relevant uh, documents that will allow you then to, to begin the process of starting to to look at the, the concept of statutory interpretation. You'll see I've mentioned here from next week onwards, Thursday the 7th at 6 p.m., uh, and obviously that's not daylight saving time. Uh, I'm, I'm here in Brisbane, so um, if I do mention time and I don't mention it, that it's Queensland time, it will always be Queensland time. The assignment has gone back to the faculty. They're just putting it on the the relevant form, and I just wanted to make sure it was in the right form, but I set that. The assignment, um, don't be nervous about that. We'll talk about that next week. I'll make sure it's uploaded in the next few days for you. Um, it follows the same format as previous assignments, but it, um, uh, or the assignment last semester, but it is uh, a different. I've rewritten the questions. So uh, I suppose before starting off, I should just tell you a bit about myself. I'm a barrister here at the private bar in Brisbane. I, I grew up in Brisbane. I've been teaching part-time at various universities in law for about 10 years now. I've taught a number of subjects on, on the internet, but this is the first one I, where I've had an involvement with Zoom, for example. So there's some things that will be new to me as well as, as to you. Um, but please feel that you can contact me at any time. You'll see here that my contact details. You can send me, of course, an email to my CQU email address, but that bar email address is the one that I sit on a lot of the time. And, in fact, the CQU one forwards to that address here. Of course, that's my work number here and call me anytime. Um, what I'd like to do just to start off with is just to have a look at the course profile. Hopefully you can see that now. Yes. Yep. <coughs> yes. I really want to, I don't want to go through some of that stuff. You can have a look at that yourself. Textbooks. Um, mm. This is our text here. I don't know if you've already purchased it. Yes. Um, but this is the one that I use a lot as well. They're both very good. This one's a little bit more detailed. This one's very good because it has a more university style of, um, of writing. And uh, it's very helpful. But if you if you do get a chance to have a look at this one, it's also, of course, very good. The um, this what's the other one? Sorry, I, was, I couldn't see what the other one. What's the other, the other one's other called one? Pierce and Gettys. Mm. Yeah. Okay. This um, we'll look in a moment at this practical guide to legal research because it's actually there. 
on on the website. But this Australian Guide to Legal Citation will be a very good reference point for you. It's published by Melbourne University Press. Here's the link to it here. It's just a very, very detailed um, analysis of how you do legal referencing. Mm. What, what I mean by that is footnote referencing as opposed to the sort of the Harvard referencing in text that you will have done in the past. Um, you will see that as a fairly standard way of referencing in the law subjects. I will. I can tell you, I'm relatively flexible with the style of referencing that you will use. What I mean by that is, if you you're used to using Harvard referencing, that is the brackets, or you're used to using footnotes, or you want to mix the two, that's not such a big problem, as long as you're consistent, and obviously the quality of those references will be what I look for, particularly in the assignment. Um, that will do. I've already spoken about the um, my contacts. Here's the information about the assignment. Week five, five p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, forty percent. This is the format for the assignment: a case note regarding a case of interest and a problem question. And in fact, I've I suppose I, I'd say it's a it's a, uh, a play on what's going on in the Queensland Parliament at the moment. The problem question has a little bit to do with the, the bikey legislation that, that's just recently gone through the Queensland Parliament. It you'll see you'll see it's not about motorcycle riders. I've actually changed it to be about bicycle gangs. <laughs> so um, there's nothing uh, too magical there, but but hopefully it'll be a little bit interesting and um, and a little bit challenging in a good way, not in a bad way. Um, the exam during the examination period, sixty percent, one hundred and eighty minutes. I actually prepared the draft examination last week, and that's once again that's also gone to to sort of be checked. Um, by faculty to make sure it's okay. And last week as well, not only did I write the exam, the exam and the assignment, but I wrote the marking guides for both. I did that partly for my own benefit so that when we come, you know, as we go through the course, I've got a clear idea of where we're heading in terms of the assignment and the examination. And that's always in the back of my mind. Um, I'll just go back. Do you still see that? Yes. Yeah. I just wanted to go through this one because it had a couple of key websites. I don't know whether you've seen any of these before. Ostley. Yeah. Tom Law. Queensland Legislation. One that isn't there is the Queensland Hansard, which is very helpful, which is the parliamentary reports that give you the, the minister's second reading speeches. Can you see this? So this is particularly relevant. Um, for example, I had cause to have a look at this in the last couple of weeks because I needed to check with work to see what had happened with a specific piece of legislation. So um, if you're wanting to check on um, youth boot, boot camps, for example, you can see this was a, this was a question. But we might be looking for a second reading speech. Okay. 
You might give me a hit now. Can you see that? Oh, here we go. I take the interjection. The consideration is not a re-prosecution of the second reading speech. So there's the Attorney General for Queensland, and he's commenting about a second reading speech. And so the Queensland Hansard can be particularly helpful in the sense that you might need to check what has been said about something. And you'll see that um, just www.parliament.qld.gov.au Hansard. Just going to go back now. So they're the key ones. I find with that I use Ostley a lot, particularly because it has this note up feature. So let's say we go to Queensland Commonwealth, Queensland Consolidated Acts, I should say, Acts Interpretation Act, and we are looking at the purpose rule. Here it is, the purpose rule in the Queensland legislation. This is something we're going to learn about. In fact, I was using this for work, and you can see that I've clicked Note Up. And when you click that, it gives you all of the times where this legislation has been looked at. And you can see that I've looked here at, at a case... 2013, Queensland Supreme Court, 3rd of October. And I clicked on that case. I click context. And it shows me that Section 14A has been looked at. And it's in the footnotes there. In my view, the interpretation which best achieves that purpose. And this is Justice Jackson in this case here. I'll just show you that, not wanting to bombard you with too much information, but that note up feature in Ostley, very, very helpful. And pretty much most of the um, acts and documents in Ostley are up to date. But they take a little bit longer, whereas the... Queensland legislation, you can be certain that it's perfectly up to date. Whereas Ostley takes a little bit of time. So here's the same act we were just looking at. Current as at 23 September. So the great thing about this Queensland legislation website is you can be absolutely certain that it's perfectly up to date. So those are the really the key websites, Ostley, the Queensland Legislation, Com Law, and I think also the Parliamentary Hansard is very helpful. We've spoken about the assignment. Now, it'll be 3,000 words, maximum length. Um, going back to this first week of the course... Where have, I, where have I done with it? Sometimes it's easier just to log back in. So here we are in week one. This practical guide to legal research is certainly worth having a careful read. 
This was the one mentioned before in the course profile by Milne and Tucker. And it's, in some ways, it's, it's a, a good uh, refresher of some of the things you might currently be doing in introduction to law or you might done, have done in the past. But what, what you can see is that it goes through where do you find the legislative material? Um, how do you make sure you've got the right amendment? And, and don't think that's a really easy process. It can be very, very difficult sometimes to get the perfectly correct reprint of an act. We were looking here before at the um, Acts Interpretation Act to see it was changed on the 23rd of September. If you click here, you'll see it's been changed a huge number of times. And you might have a legal question that involves something that happened on the 7th of December. Well, you need to make sure you're looking at the right act. Of course, the section or sections you're looking at may not have changed between the 1st of December and the 10th of December, but you still need to make sure you're looking at that right version of the Act. And that can be very important. And I recall when I was working in Canberra, watching a case in the High Court where the lawyers involved had the wrong reprint of the Act. And so it's very important to get the right reprint, which is applicable as at the right date. Um, and that's the sort of thing that comes out of this, this document here. Determine whether legislation is in force <laughs> at a particular time. How do you update that legislation and check what, what is the current legislation that's in play? And then how do you work out what cases have considered that specific section or sections? And that's really where Osley is particularly helpful because it allows you to, to note up, as it's called, what's been going on there. Um, and, of course, there might be regulations that are relevant or rules, as they're called. Um, and then how do you bring that all together and and effectively use it to articulate a, a legal point or points or to assess a factual question that might be put before you. So that sounds more complicated than it is, but it's that process of actually identifying the key stuff. And so that's what we're really doing this week. We're finding the legislation that's applicable we're working out which jurisdiction it might be in. Obviously, in that week, last week, there was that meet the librarian process and obviously and also an opportunity for us all to start to get a feel for how we're going to do the course in a practical sense. One of the things that you'll see the notes deal with is they talk about the history of statutory interpretation but also they talk about some of these concepts like separation of powers that you'll be familiar with from your, your other subjects like intro to law. Um, and you'll see that the notes refer to uh, separation of powers. Don't worry too much about the PowerPoint because effectively I've usurped the PowerPoint in what I've done this evening and obviously what I've done will now be posted as a, uh, a recording and there'll be a link here to this recording. So that's a bit of an introduction for tonight. I've, um, I've traversed a whole range of things quite quickly and I'm conscious that we've moved through some things quite quickly regarding some of those things like Osley and the Queensland legislation, but hopefully you can revert to the recording um, once again, I'm sorry for that first 10 or so minutes where the first Zoom session I was in didn't um, seem to want to work, but this one, hopefully, I think, for all of us, has worked quite well. I'm going to turn off the recording now, but I'm going to stay on the line.